Hey, what's up? It's the boys from Bit Season, and today's show is sponsored by SeatGeek. And if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. We've all got the app on our phones. Use code BITSEASON for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Did you have a dream last night? If not, are you sure? Everyone dreams for about two hours per night. We just don't have the tape recorder running. Do pilots get jet lag? Are we ever going to get a hangover cure? Did the dinosaurs have feathers? They had feathers. Figured I'd give you that one. My name is Mike Simpson. This is what we do on my podcast. It's called I've Got Questions. Chameleons are not what you think. Beer used to be a drink at breakfast. Let's learn some stuff. New episodes Thursdays. I've Got Questions on Odyssey or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. You know who it is. Youngest in charge movement. Linnell Willingham here with you on the fan until 10 o'clock tonight before I dish the rock to the JR Sport Brief show. During the break, breaking news out of the National Football League. According to ESPN's Adam Schefter, Seahawks and wide receiver DK Metcalf have agreed to a three-year $72 million contract extension with $58.2 million guaranteed. So the wide receiver market is starting to uh, settle its way, work its way out a little bit as we uh, dive deeper here into the offseason. And a very uh, McLaurin-esque-like deal for, for DK Metcalf. And uh, he just the latest domino to drop at the wide receiver position. As you all know, this offseason season. Just unprecedented movement and 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 continual frequent resetting of the market uh, at that wide receiver position. And DK Metcalf, the latest to do so, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, the Seattle Seahawks and DK Metcalf have agreed to terms on a three-year, $72 million extension, including $58 million guaranteed. So the latest domino to fall at wide receiver is DK Metcalf. The other domino is out in San Francisco. Debo Samuel is doing what, they, or what they're referring to as a hold-in. Exactly, right? The NFL is getting crazy with this how we come up with stuff. But DK Metcalf, nonetheless, doing a hold-in where he has reported to the facility of the San Francisco 49ers but is refusing to participate uh, in practice until his contract situation gets resolved. Um, and I can't blame him. We saw Terry McLaurin do the same thing uh, during the commander's mandatory OTA session. I mean, mandatory minicamp session, excuse me. We also saw him hold out of the OTAs. The interesting angle to this for me, right, is aren't you, aren't you so glad that the commanders aren't dealing with this stuff right now that they did the right thing and went on ahead and paid Terry McLaurin before we got this late in the offseason? Because right now, it's nothing but a distraction, I have to imagine, uh, down in San Francisco for the 49ers. Debo Samuel holding out. Trey Lance trying to establish himself as the new QB1 in San Francisco. And imagine how much harder life is for you. We don't got your number one option out there uh, in Debo Samuel. We'll get to the 49ers and what Lewis Riddick had to say about them on Get Up this morning in about a half hour or so. But right now, though, I want to continue to take your calls about the Washington Commanders, I was out at training camp today, boots on the ground for the second straight day, getting to watch practice up close and personal. And the question is simple for you guys. Do you have any questions about what I saw today out at Commanders training camp? You can get at me on Twitter and Instagram, N-E-L-L underscore B-T-P. You can also call in MGM National Harbor Listener Lines, wide open, 1-800-636-1067. I gave you guys earlier in the show that had a little bit of a uh, stock up, so to speak, right? Now, now we'll go to the stock down. Well, I just gave you a stock down. I told you Sam Cosman, the offensive tackle uh, for the Washington Commanders, had a rough day because Montez Sweat was beating him like a drum all practice long. I'll stick on the defensive side of the ball for my next stock up candidate. Seventh round draft pick out of Oklahoma State, Christian Holmes had himself a day. So at first when I was out there, and they're yelling, Silp, yeah, Silp, yeah, Silp. That's all you heard from, from defensive backs coach Chris Harris. So when I'm hearing that, I'm like, Sip. Looking at the roster, is somebody named Cyprian? Is there a uh, sippy cup? Something, none of the above was there. That's what they call him. That's what they call him. Christian Holmes, otherwise known as Sip, 
the rookie cornerback, seventh-round pick out of Oklahoma State, had himself a day. And we heard some positive things about him during the spring in the mandatory minicamp sessions in the OTA period. But he has come in here, and this is two straight days now of work I've seen from him. He's come in here and really, really established himself as a guy who's going to be in the mix here at the cornerback position. And and interestingly enough, being that he's a seventh-round pick, you wonder whether or not, you know, he's going to be able to integrate himself right away. And you always worry about the adjustment for guys that are late-round picks. But Washington, and it might just be what Ron Rivera and company do, striking gold again with late-round picks in the defensive, uh, in the secondary, excuse me. We saw Cam Curl in 2020 come out and make an impact really unexpectedly. And now Christian Holmes making plays. He had a couple pass breakups. I had a near interception. And what I love about Christian Holmes and really this entire Washington defense is they have, they have taken on this new swagger and confidence and personality that they have. They're talking the entire time. And I love it. I'm somebody who's, play college football and been in camp. This is what happens during this time of year. Tensions are high. You're just now getting back. Everybody's excited still to be out there. You're not pissed off at each other yet. And Christian Holmes, you know, multiple times today, did a nice job breaking on the football, causing some pass breakups. And then he was solid in coverage. When when, when it comes to playing the football in the air, had a couple deep shots taken on him. Didn't panic. Didn't panic. Played it well. Stayed with his fundamentals and technique. And did the damn thing. Want to continue to take your calls, though. I was boots on the ground at Commander's Training Camp this morning for the second straight day. I want to hear from you guys. What questions do you have about the Washington Commanders for me and what I saw today out there at practice? You can get at me on Twitter and Instagram, N-E-L-L underscore BTP. We're going to go to the phones, though. Let's go to Tony in Tyson's who wants to give or ask a question. What's going on, Tony? Hey, good talk. Good show. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, my main concern for the Washington uh, Commanders is the offensive line and the fact that, you know, Cosby got pretty uh, easily beat by a, a good defensive uh, pass rusher is concerning. You know, at some point, when you let Trent Williams go, uh, an all-pro slayer, uh even uh, um, Moses, I think that was his name. Morgan Moses, yeah. You're going to have to, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to pay the price at some point. And I know they, these days, the salary cap, they did not decide to spend all their money off at the line. And that worries me because Carson Wentz is only one bad sack away from an injury. And our running game, you know, we don't have the marquee, you know, multi million dollar for running back. So if you have any um, observations on how the offensive line uh, performed, yeah. I'd, uh, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, Tony, I thought, uh, and I appreciate the call, it was a good day, in my opinion, uh, from the offensive line yesterday. They handled themselves much better yesterday. Today was, was was a different story. As I mentioned earlier at the top, Montez Sweat and Sam Cosby was, was, was really the matchup I was paying attention to with a keen eye. And Montez Sweat showing every bit of that, that 6'6", 260-pound frame. Just being physical and nasty with Sam Cosby. He did it in a variety of ways. Saw him rush with power. Saw him use the speed rush. Did a nice job really using your hands. And that's something that when you're doing trench work without pads on, right, and, and, and you're really looking at offensive line versus defensive line without the pads on, technique and how you use your hands, so, so important because there is no shoulder pads for you to get inside and grip. So it's really all about the hand fighting. And Montez Sweat, uh, I thought, did a pretty good job. Not to slam Sam Cosme. Yes, he had a rough day, but Sam Cosme is really not somebody I worry too much about. Uh, The big concern that I know this coaching staff and front office have is can he stay healthy? Because you talk to pundits around the National Football League. I had Brian Baldinger on the show about two to three weeks ago. Couldn't speak highly, more highly uh, of Sam Cosme. Uh, Brian Baldinger, obviously, you know, one of the more respected film junkies in the National Football League, just had a bevy of nice things to say about Sam Cosby and how he performed in his rookie season. But, yeah, uh, as, as Tony mentioned, the depth the depth on the offensive line is interesting. I, I, I really like what they have on the interior because I'm a big believer of Sadiq Charles. I'm a big believer in Wes Schweitzer. I, I really am a big believer of Wes Schweitzer. I think between either him, him, McKissick, 
and, and Logan Thomas. I mean, what what a, what a great free agent haul they were able to bring in in Ron Rivera's first season here. I, I think Wes Schweitzer hopefully uh, is going to be here for years to come. But like I said, yeah, very comfortable with the depth that they have on the interior. The tackle situation's interesting. I know Brian Baldinger, another guy that he's really high on, he just did a breakdown on the kid about a week and a half ago, is Cornelius Lucas. That That is, that's somebody that, you know, one of the better swing tackles in the league. And we all know what Charles Leno is. He's just been as solid as a rock ever since he's come in here. So, but outside of, you know, those three guys, I mean, if somebody goes down, you know, you might be in a tough situation if you're Washington uh, at the tackle spot. Boy, I was talking, I was talking junk earlier to Craig Hoffman. I, I did 4.30 to 6 on the Hoffman show today over on the Team 980. And I blamed Chris Russell for sitting in the seat that I was sitting in, causing me to belch at just a ridiculous rate. And I almost just let one go on the air. You probably all heard it if you're listening close. So if you hear me belching tonight throughout the show, just know I was well fed out at Commander's Training Camp. I'll say that. Got to take a quick time out. On the other side of this break, I'll continue to empty out my training camp notebook. What did I like? What didn't I like? I'll tell you what I liked on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. You listen to the fan. Hey, what's up? It's the boys from Bit Season, and today's show is sponsored by SeatGeek. And if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. We've all got the app on our phones. Use code BITSEASON for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. I'm Listening reminds you that you are not alone and that talk saves lives. And now it's even easier to reach out and talk to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline with 988. 988 is just like 911 for emergency services. When you call or text 988 from any phone, you will be connected directly with trained counselors in over 200 crisis centers nationwide. They can get you the help you need anytime, anywhere. Talk saves lives. And with 988, talking is only three digits away. Find out more at imlistening.org. You know those headlines that make you stop scrolling and actually read an article? I'm Mike Rogers. Those are the kinds of stories I'm diving into on my podcast, Something Offbeat. Like the caterpillar infestation in Maine that had us rethinking our relationship with insects. We were talking about a time 300 million years ago, if you can imagine. There was a dragonfly. It had a two-foot wingspan. Just search for Something Offbeat in the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. A bad team facing a good team is never completely out of it. Nick Costos, co-host of You Better You Bet. 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern on the BetQL Network. There's 162 games in the season. The best teams are going to lose 60-plus times, and the worst teams are going to win 60-plus times. Each night is its own individual entity. That's what makes betting on the baseball regular season so much fun. All the insight you need to bet smarter is at BetQL.com. And listen to You Better You Bet with Nick Costos and Ken Barkley, streaming weekdays from 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern on Odyssey. Home to all the jaw-dropping moments. Home to all the best plays in the league. Home to your favorite players from the cities you love. MLB.tv is the home of streaming baseball. Get your ticket to out-of-market games live or on demand across all your favorite supported devices. Home or away, you'll be able to catch all the MLB action this season and gain access to exclusive content. MLB Big Inning brings fans a special live look into the game and delivers the best highlights from games every single day. That is out of the ball. Tune in for select pre- and post-game coverage or check out new MLB originals for a deeper dive into your favorite teams and ballparks. You can even check out inning milestones, in-game details, and personalize your app for your favorite team. MLB.tv has extended their content library for more originals like vendors and out-of-the-park films. You can find returning shows like MLB Carded, Baseball Zen, and so much more. There's no better place to never miss a moment of the action than with MLB.tv. Stream every game from every team all season long with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. we got some more breaking news coming back from the commercial break. According to our friend over at WSA 9, Darren Haynes, who has been all over uh, this Dan Snyder stuff here today, uh, just tweeted out about 15 minutes ago, breaking news, Commander's owner Daniel Snyder, voluntary deposition under oath for the House Oversight Committee, excuse me, has ended after 11 hours. Uh, There's a statement from Dan Snyder's spokesperson, uh, on Darren Haynes' Twitter. I just retweeted that out for you guys to see. Um, it, it's uh, it's an interesting situation, uh, definitely. Um, it, it's definitely something that we'll continue 
uh, to to look out for. We're actually efforting r- right now to get Darren Haynes on the show for us to get some more details on that situation. We'll let you know uh, how that works out. But boy, talking to uh, the producers of Grant and Danny earlier in the show, Ryan Clary and Darius Dameron, we were just discussing like, man, like wasn't a lot of fans out of practice today for the commanders. We got the Dan Snyder stuff going on. Where is the excitement for the rebrand? We're finally here playing football, and nobody wants to come out and watch. Is it because of Dan Snyder and the black cloud that's hanging over this franchise right now? Or is it because the people are just tired of the terrible product that's been put on the field for the last 30-plus years? I think either or is a damn good reason not to come out to training camp. But I will say this. I'm not making a big deal out of the fans not coming out to training camp, and here's why. First of all, being out there myself, you're learning stuff here in the first week, getting to get familiar with the guys, but stuff doesn't really get on and popping until the pads come on, and that doesn't happen until next week. I believe Saturday is a special uh, fan event. I believe it's the Salute to Service Day, and, and there'll be members, uh, there'll be service members out there at practice, so I'm sure – the crowd will be much thicker on uh, on Saturday. We'll see about tomorrow. I don't know what's going on for tomorrow. I I, I heard, uh, I was talking to the rally captain out there yesterday, the one of the diehard fans in this commander's fan base, and him and Tailgate Ted were, were, were expressing their displeasure and how difficult it was to gain access. I believe there's a lottery system uh, going on right now, and that's how fans are or I guess being selected as to who can come out to practice or not, but I'll say this, right? It's training camp. This isn't September 11th against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tread lightly, calm the hell down about there not being fans, that many fans at least, on day two of training camp. Like, are we serious? Is that is that what we've gotten with this organization? Is that is that where we're going? I'm so tired of everybody trying to pile on this group for every little thing that happens. Relax, please. I have good things to tell you about the team. That's why I'm here tonight till 10 o'clock to tell you good stuff about the commanders. That defense from a season ago that all made us want to stab our eyes out the first eight weeks of the season, they look good for the second straight day in practice. They look good for the second straight day in practice. Montez Sweat, another guy who I think has should have his stock going up after two days of camp. He's been flying around out there talking his cash money, cash money-ish, you know what I'm saying? And I, 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 I'm so sick and tired of everybody trying to pile on this group. Relax. Chill. I will say this. Check back in with me after week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. The inaugural. The inaugural Washington Commanders regular season home game. Also, really, check back in with me after next Saturday, August the 6th. That practice at FedEx Field that is going to be open to the public completely, I believe. Free parking, the whole nine. Check it with me then. Pads will be on at that time. So, like, look, chill out a little bit. It'll it'll get better, I promise. Can we get a free practice where I don't have to drive to Landover, Maryland? I know. But look, what do you want? Look, you, uh, were you in the group complaining about the v- v- the potential oh, Virginia what? relocation? What I would like is free practice that's in Ashburn <laughs> where it's seven minutes away from my apartment. That would be glorious where I don't have to play the lottery. But Denton, like, the, the, how many fans, uh, realistically speaking, like, it would be tough to to fit a large contingent of fans out there at Ashburn. I, I, know, I, they, I, I know they've done it in the past. Oh, but looking at the setup right have. now, the way that they have it, it doesn't seem like you can you can fit more than a thousand. Oh, they definitely have. I mean, because I remember and be, and be comfortable at least and be able to see everything. Well, yeah, you you, you know you, you make some sacrifices. Of I mean, course. what are you there for? Are you there for seeing, or if you're a kid, you're there for the autograph. Look, what, what what do you do if, if if the kid's old enough? I already know what I'd do. If I had a kid and he was old enough, I'd put him on my shoulders and have him hold the phone. 
put them on my neck and just let him let him get the content. No, I mean, what you're supposed to do as a parent is you bring your kids, and then when nobody's looking, you kind of give them the nod, or run underneath the, the rope, and see <laughs> after practice is over what autographs you can get. You know, I joke about that, but that's how I got Sean Taylor's autograph. You got in a 2006. Sean Taylor autograph? It's it's a point of contention because I got it on a piece of paper, not like a football. Who the or hell anything. cares? You got an autograph from arguably one of the best players I'd, in the history of this franchise. I don't have it anymore because it was on a slip of paper. <laughs> what did you do with the? Yeah. What? I was 12 years old. I was 11, 12 years old. But I, boy, I looked oh at my mom. My mom gave me the nod. No one was looking. I dove under. I got Jason Campbell. I got Sean Taylor in you that won't. order. So that means that in days since, since the since the JIT has been a go-getter. My guy. Yeah, I'd say rebel. Rebel. Arr. Outlaw. Can you give me a good growl? I'm not going to growl for you. That's <laughs> right. Wow. You know who was growling this morning? Lewis Riddick on first take. Not first take, excuse me. On get up. This morning on ESPN talking about the quarterback situation in San Francisco. And we'll talk about that in more detail as the show moves on. But I'll give some quick thoughts on the overall San Francisco situation. A lot, a lot is a lot is going to be learned very early on, I feel like, in the season when it comes to whether or not Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, the general manager in San Francisco, and the head coach, Kyle Shanahan, we're going to know right away, I feel like, whether or not they knew what the hell they were, were, were talking about when they, when they decided to, I, I call it mortgaging your future, to go out and get Trey Lance. You're, you're going to find out very, very early, I feel like, uh, in this season, whether or not you know they're going to be somebody that is going to be a contender or a pretender. Two of the first three weeks for the 49ers, or three of the first four weeks, excuse me, you got on the road against the Denver Broncos. Imagine being Trey Lance in your third regular season contest in prime time. It's going to be against the vaunted Denver Broncos defense. Then, guess what you got to do two weeks after that? You're You're at home in prime time again, though, and the defending Super Bowl champions coming to town. The L.A. Rams. I think we're going to find out very early next season whether or not Trey Lance has got the goods or not. They traded multiple first-round picks. He better have the damn goods. They have two primetime games to start their season off. Two out of the two out of the first four weeks are in primetime. Who made that decision? Because they knew going into that it was either Jimmy G or Trey Lance. Those aren't exactly primetime guys. Well. Trey Lance is a big uh, to be decided when it comes to. I know the two other quarterbacks. Oh, Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford. Ooh, hey, uh. how you doing? My name is Russell. Last name Wilson. I just love saying that. That's, it's one of my favorite that's things. Mr. To say. Unlimited to you. <laughs> let's ride. That's what he's become famous for. It's gotten annoying, too, honestly, Denton. That let's ride thing is, is grown legs in the life of its own and it's doing. It's doing social media bad. Literally every time Russell Wilson speaks, it gets annoying. <laughs> Did you see uh, yesterday he showed up and he had his own jersey on? One of the players, I forgot who it was, quote tweeted and was like, I've been in this league for a long damn time. I've never seen an NFL player wear his own jersey. To his defense, I did that the first day of my freshman year of high school. So you know what? <laughs> Russell Wilson and freshman year dead and that had a buzz cut and acne and no chin hair. They're one <laughs> and the same. Wow. Lucky enough for us. We're going to take a quick time out. On the other side of this break, WSA 9's Darren Haynes will join the show. He's got the latest on Daniel Snyder and his deposition today in front of the House Oversight Committee that ended about 45 minutes ago or so. We'll pepper Darren with ridiculous questions about the ridiculous questions potentially asked to Dan Snyder. Don't go anywhere. Listen to the fan. Welcome back. You know who it is, youngest in charge movement, Linnell Willingham here with you on The Fan. It's till 10 o'clock tonight before I dish the rock to the JR Sport Brief show. As we were talking about before the break, Washington Commanders owner Daniel Snyder voluntarily, voluntarily was under oath speaking to the House Oversight Committee, and it ended after 11 hours, and the man all over that situation is WSA 9's Darren Haynes. He's joining us right now on the BetQL guest hotline. Bet smarter, beat the books. Download the BetQL app today. Darren, you weren't at training camp today, but you had better things to do 
clearly covering this. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to say it was better things to do, but uh, it was definitely something that that needed to be done. I mean, because we've been waiting, you know, for this for this moment for a very long time. You know, the back and forth between the oversight committee and, and Dan Snyder's lawyers. You know, it went about like five weeks back and forth before they finally agreed to this this date to have this uh, deposition. Um, but yeah, it lasted eleven hours, which blew my mind. I didn't <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna. You know, I, I thought my day was gonna start early, get off maybe around two o'clock, and no. no, I'm on the news at five and six, getting updates from my sources saying it's still going, it's still going. Um, and you know, Dan Snyder's people, a spokesperson for for Commander's owner Dan Snyder, they they released their their statement saying that uh. You know, he answered all the all the questions and spoke about you know all the great things that the organization is doing now in reference to like the last two years, like when like, you know when Jason Wright took over as president. Of course, Ron Rivera came in here when he wanted to change the culture and stuff like that. Um, so he spoke about the the he answered all the questions, but spoke about what has changed. Now, what we're waiting for, which I think is very important, which I'm still working on right now, is what is the oversight committee going to say? Because clearly, you know, this is just me just looking at it. it. This could possibly happen where, yes, Dan Snyder answered all the questions, but the oversight committee could say, yeah, he answered all the questions because uh, he said maybe the fifth. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he just said, I don't recall. You know, I, <laughs> you know that. Yeah. I, I, we call it a little look, Darren. In my, I don't in, my recall. Age demo, in my age demographic, Darren, we call that spinning somebody. He, <laughs> I'm sure he was out there spinning them. But, you know, we also could get a, a statement from the, the House Oversight Committee and said and that says Mr. Snyder answered all of our questions and we got a lot of good information. We can't wait to put this together and possibly release the transcripts of it. And that was my, um, that, that was my next question for you, Darren. Do you think that, that transcripts will be released from this? And if so, you know, how they have do you to. expect it to get? Okay, they have they, to. They, why is they that? Ha- because the, big, the reason why they started the whole entire investigation is because the NFL didn't release the findings of their investigation. Mm-hmm. That's why the House Oversight Committee first started it. There'll be, there'll, <laughs> that'll be the most contradiction, contradiction <laughs> thing in the entire world if they do all of that and they don't release it. Yeah. Wasn't that the main point why they started the investigation? 100%, Darren. I completely agree with you. But you know who we're dealing with. This is, this is shady stuff from the, from the get-go here. It wouldn't surprise me. If maybe the House Oversight Committee pulls the okie doke and find out they're really Team Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, obviously, when I say that, but obviously, yeah. who knows where this thing is going to go? I just, I what I what I believe is it can go in two different ways. The first way will be is, uh, which the way I think is going to happen because they have to is they probably have all the transcripts right now. And they're going to do their do everything perfect, like do it correctly, double check everything, make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed. Because if one word is wrong, miss, you know, and you, he, he says, you know, it, maybe he says commanders, and you put Redskins, you know, like make <laughs> sure every fragile? right, it's sensitive. Yeah, make sure every because because you'll lose, you'll be discredited, it'll be it'll be wrong information, and then the whole thing will be false because you don't know if if this word is wrong, then all of it could be wrong. 100%. So. So you want to make sure you get that transcript where it is exactly uh, what Dan Snyder said, all the questions are right, and then you release it. That's, that's what I think is, is going to happen. Um, now, there's probably some questions that he probably did not answer because, you know, if it, in regards to those um, non-disclosure agreements. And, mm-hmm. and the Oversight Committee, they, I mean, they made it clear. I, I mean, I've been working on this story at 4 a.m., my man. That's why we <laughs> have it on. We want the best. <laughs> 4, 4 a.m. I started writing my story, like, cause I knew he was going to, um, he was going to be in, uh, he was going to show up for this deposition around like eleven o'clock last night. Just you know, sometimes you work your sources and they're like, hey man, don't re- don't release it out just yet. Right. Um, but I woke up at four a.m. because I was like, it's about to come out. Let me start writing this bad boy now. My my web article. <laughs> um, but the oversight committee they they made it clear like if if he doesn't answer these questions fully and we you know we feel like maybe there's something else he's hiding. Um, they're basically basically going to wait for him to step onto U.S. soil and, and handle it a different way. And that that was my next question, Darren. Like, what? what <laughs> I'm, now, answering, now that this, I'm answering all your questions. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> but no, like I appreciate it though because look, we want to get to the bottom of this thing. As I'm sure Roger Goodell, the National Football League, want to get to the bottom of this thing too. But 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 Darren, to, to to piggyback off what you said, is the subpoena the next the next thing right for for Daniel Snyder in this situation? 
for one. And then for two, there's an election coming up. I think it'll be after uh, – I was talking to somebody on the beat today that said it'll be after the first six weeks of the season have concluded that election will happen and then potentially mm-hmm. this could get tossed. Do you think Dan Snyder has the unmitigated gall to stay out of the country that long? So unlike you and I, my man, we don't have the money that Mr. Snyder has. <laughs> we don't have – we don't have the yacht he has because, listen, that ho- that yacht is is bigger than some of the homes out here in D.C. Oh, I know. And, that. and that's and that's a beautiful way. That's a nice. That's living good. That's living your best life if <laughs> you're living you. on that yacht. So, so I, I don't think he's going to be uncomfortable if he had to stay out of the country that entire time. I mean, he watches games streaming online. Right. Uh, but what I what what some of the things that that could happen possibly with this is if the oversight committee feels like Dan Snyder did not answer all those questions the way they wanted them, but didn't answer the questions they wanted answered, and they need more information, and the only way they can do that is by issuing him a subpoena. I totally believe that's, that's going to happen. I remember coming on, on, uh, on Grant and Danny, maybe it was last week or two weeks ago, where I mentioned that if he doesn't answer all the questions, as soon as he gets to U.S. soil, they're going to issue that subpoena so he can answer those questions, especially the ones in regards to, that, uh, to people who are under non-disclosure agreements Darren, um, because they, they want to get all that information. Darren, do you see a scenario, right? <clears throat> hey, wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting information right now live with you. Let me read what I have. Real hold on. Wow, this is great. Only here on Overtime, you're getting the straight drop style from Darren Haynes. Let me hear what you got. Coming in hot and heavy right now. We're on the... BetQL guest hotline with WSI hey, Darren on. Haynes. You can follow him on Twitter at Darren M. Haynes for the latest. And we're getting ready to get the latest as soon as Darren. All right. So this is, what, this is what we have right now. So this is from a, this is from a spokesperson for the oversight committee. And they, um, they, they are confirming that the, the deposition lasted over 10 hours, which we already knew um, shortly after 630. And it says, uh, we're not going to have any. They're not going to have a statement from the oversight committee tonight. Uh, but they did want. I'm going to point this out. We'll flag that contrary to Mr. Snyder's statement, our investigation did not conclude last month. So I need to look deeper into that. Um, Can you take a hypothesis as to what they mean by that? And and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm going to go back now to the entire statement. Uh Wow. Go ahead and talk, man. Go, this, this, go ahead and talk. This, I'm going to read this. This is, this is interesting because, wow. I, I, what I was going to ask. So, yeah. So, all right. So, here we go. So, it says, so this is now from Dan Snyder's spokesperson because it says, Washington Commander's co-owner Dan Snyder today voluntarily testified under oath for nearly 11 hours on top of the previous cooperation provided by the committee. Despite the investigation's conclusion last month marked by proposed legislation okay. and a summary of findings, Mr. Snyder fully addressed all questions about the workplace misconduct. So basically, Snyder's camp is saying the, con- the investigation was concluded. The oversight committee says, "Nah, ba- nah, this bad boy is still going on." Yeah. See, so, 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 why? What, what, what is the? What's not clicking between the two parties right now? That Mr. Snyder's people are saying that the con- the, the investigation concluded last month, and the House Oversight Committee is saying, "No, no, no, th- this is ongoing." I think this is something where. They oversight committee believes that this investigation is not over. Maybe they can get more information. Maybe something happened today. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that they want more information on, and maybe that's where they issued a subpoena to get more information. But let's just look at it realistically. The investigation couldn't be over in the past if it we just had this today, right? If this is just now happening, correct? Because this this will be part of that investigation, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, Dan I'm, Snyder, I'm Dan tweeting Snyder, this. I'm tweeting this out. That's like, yeah. oh, my man. Dan, Dan Snyder's <laughs> people are cuckoo. Clearly, I, I just I just don't understand, man. When you look at it on face value from a regular human being's perspective, how the hell does somebody duck and dodge the feds like this so successfully? And and, I, and I, Darren, I think I asked you the last time you were on with me. It was about maybe close to a month ago. If Dan Snyder does not cross. Uh, U.S. So- does does not uh, get on U.S. soil, and they cannot physically issue him the subpoena. Do we see a situation where they start subpoenaing people close to Dan Snyder who are around the situation potentially? Man, I'm, I'm I, I clearly could not 
put a message together and listen to at the same time. So give me the question. What, what, again, I, what I was man. saying was, remember, you were on with me about close to a month ago, and, and, I, and I asked you about the scenario of Dan Snyder not returning to U.S. soil and then the House yep. Oversight Committee potentially subpoenaing people around him and close to him. Do you see something like that happening? Yeah, I mean, his 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 wife is right here. <laughs> yeah, she's also oh, she's you know, not, so she is in U.S. <laughs> Wait, well, well, she well, she, well, hey, hey, she's you, somewhere. I mean, she she has you know she's running the day to day operations of the team. You right. think she's going to be at probably at some of these games? You know, she's around. I, right? Yeah, she she's around. So so obviously you you have that you have that right there. Uh, you also have the uh, the uh, situation where maybe their lawyer, uh, Dan Snyder's lawyer, is. You know, walking down the street in Georgetown, and next thing you know, you have that process server and says, "Hey, are you so and so and so and so? You have been served." Right. Um, so there's there's many different ways that this can this can happen. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not deep into the court systems, uh, but uh, but I know there's always some type of way, and and I'm sure the oversight committee is going to find a way to make sure they get all their answers. Um, but you got to hand it to them, even you know. <laughs> As they try to <laughs> I mean, find all these facts, like, they 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 put in a lot of hard work. And what you were mentioning before, though, with this uh, election coming up, you know, the 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 house could shift to where there's more, you know, uh, um, uh, Republicans than, than Democrats. And the Republicans clearly, this is not on their agenda. Yeah, they don't think it's worth their time. Apparently, that's all we've heard. Anytime Correct. anybody's been asked about it. Correct. So, so I mean, you 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 have to give credit to the oversight committee, no matter what side you're on that there was a job that they wanted to do and they really, they were at it. They got Roger Goodell to testify for hours, which, <laughs> you know, we don't get to interview Roger Goodell for that exactly. long. Exactly. Um, and then we've never, we have never, I've, I've never interviewed Dan Snyder before. He, he never, he never speaks to the media. Doesn't talk. <laughs> um, but he, but clearly he spoke to the oversight committee longer today then he probably spoke to anybody else, maybe about the team or whatever, interviewed questions than probably any media person in D.C. combined. The fact that it lasted 11 hours, Darren, I mean, there's no way he was out there saying, I plead the fifth the entire time, and it lasted 11 hours. Clearly, we're... we're unless, there's that many, unless there's that many questions. <laughs> it, might, it might just be that many questions. There's so many angles and, and ways to try to unpack this thing. In a nutshell, though, man, it, it, it's it's all crazy, pretty much. And, and, and the thing I'll say to, to, to really leave it and, and tie things up here, Dan Snyder needs to bring himself home so we can figure out what the hell's going on with this situation. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody uh, – well, I can't say everybody. I can't, I, I can't speak for everybody. But I think a lot of people, clearly you see it on social media. Uh, we've talked to fans. Um, there are a lot of people who – who really want wants this to come down to some type of conclusion where they know everything but happened and come down and, and finally make some decision on, okay, what's going to be the situation moving forward? Is, is Dan Snyder going to be forced to sell the team or is nothing going to happen and he's still going to own the team? I think a lot of people are, are waiting for that decision or whatever may happen out of this when all these findings come out. Um, that's going to be an interesting work day. I will say that. A long work day for yourself, just like today was. My man up at 4 a.m. trying to get us a scoop. I appreciate you bro, giving my, me some time. Bro, my wife was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you cooking breakfast? Who, this who, who are you online with? Who, who's this? <laughs> I was like, I was like I'm, I'm just doing some Dan Snyder stuff. Uh, look, look, I hope you left for some eggs and bacon for waking her up that early. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's not listening because now if I'm going to go home, she's like, why don't you make me some bacon and eggs? <laughs> look, 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 look. They'll get you in trouble. I appreciate you giving me some time, OG. All right, my man. WSA 9's Darren Haynes joining us with the latest on the Dan Snyder situation and his deposition today in front of the House Oversight Committee. You can follow him on Twitter at Darren M. Haynes for the latest. And make sure you check him out tonight on WSA 9. I'm sure he'll have much more to give us. We got to take a quick time out here on the other side of this break. We'll unpack some of what Darren Haynes just said. I'll give my reaction to the entire situation, bring in my producer, Denton Day. He'll weigh, on it, weigh in on it as well. And we're taking your calls on this as well. Dan Snyder, after 11 hours, finally out of his deposition with the House Oversight Committee, what do you hope to learn after his 11 hours today in front of the House Oversight Committee? I'll tell you what I think on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. You listen to the Hey, what's up? It's the boys from Bit Season, and today's show is sponsored by SeatGeek. 
And if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. We've all got the app on our phones. Use code BITSEASON for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. I'm Rick Martinez. I'm Carla Lolly Music. And we're the hosts of a new podcast from Pineapple Street Studios called Borderline Salty. Rick and I are cookbook authors and friends and have spent years working in test kitchens together. So when it comes to the intimidating task of seasoning your cast iron skillet. Or the latest internet food trend that you can't quite figure out, we've got your back. On Borderline Salty, we want to help you become a better, smarter, happier cook. Listen to Borderline Salty now on Odyssey, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Jewel. One day I was in a dressing room trying to steal a dress, and I was like, I'm a statistic. I'm homeless, I'm stealing. And I realized if I don't change something, I'm going to end up in jail or dead. And I remember this quote that was attributed to Buddha that said, happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have. It depends on what you think. And so I decided to see if I could turn my life around one thought at a time. More at imlistening.org. Talk saves lives. Baseball is everywhere you are this season with the MLB app. Enjoy the show from wherever you are when you download the free MLB app to your mobile device. Never miss a second of the action with coverage of in-game highlights, pitch-by-pitch features, select live broadcast coverage, and more. more. Show support for your favorite team with customizable MLB club-branded icons. And And tune in to exclusive premium content for every team in the league. That is out of the ballpark! The MLB app is your ticket to all things baseball all the time. You can even get live notifications sent to your phone, watch, and car, so you're always up to date on the biggest breaking news, scores, and standings. The MLB app is your hub for live baseball everywhere you go. The number one source of live baseball on your Apple and Android devices is the official app of Major League Baseball. Download the MLB app today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. Additional subscriptions may be required. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Hey, everyone. It's Kenny Main the host of Hey Maine, the Kenny Maine Talks to Famous People podcast, made a list of people we thought would say yes, and most of them did. Not going to call out the others who didn't. Actually, what the others do mainly is don't answer. So not really saying no. So really, our potential audience for guests and for listening audience is the whole planet. No one really has said no. So we want you to find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. Fan. Darren Hayes just hopped on the program with us before we took the last time out. Dropping some bombs on us. Giving it to us straight from the source. Reading us out text messages from sources as they're coming into the phone. Only here on Overtime are you getting that type of exclusive access. But Darren Haynes just confirmed that Daniel Snyder wrapped up his uh, deposition with the House Oversight Committee about 30, 45 minutes ago. And it lasted for 11 whole hours. Good gracious. Did he get to take a bathroom break? Did he eat? I hope not. (laughs) Look, I I probably feel the same way. I I hope he was as miserable as possible during those 11 hours. Hold it in, you menace to society. (laughs) I mean, what other way to describe the man? Just an evil, wicked human being. But it looks like we may be getting closer to the bottom of this situation. We all know. Dan Snyder going to try his hardest to continue to duck and dodge and get out of harm's way here with this situation. But time is a ticking uh, on this situation. And Darren hinted at it. Look, if Dan Snyder wants to play hardball, doesn't want to cross U.S. soil, there are people very close to him. There are people very close to him that are going to have to face the repercussions of Daniel Snyder. It's my best mafia voice, but you get what I'm trying to say here. People are going to be talked to under oath no matter what. So, Dan Snyder, bring your ass home. Yeah. Come home. The last thing he wants to do, you know who he is who, who he is afraid of right now? Who is he afraid of? He's afraid of his wife. Oh, I know. Could you yeah. imagine how awkward that's going to be having to talk about sexual misconduct situations? Well, if she gets if she, subpoenaed. Yeah. If, She knows everything, and if she gets subpoenaed, the odds are she is going to spill the beans on the fact that maybe Dan Snyder uh, has not been as hands-off as the NFL and Roger Goodell said he was, and if that's the case, then Roger Goodell's testimony comes under fire, and it becomes this whole big, even more jumbled mess in which Roger Goodell would then go, uh, I think, uh, balls to the wall and absolutely drop the nuke on Dan Snyder, and he'd be all gone. So maybe I do want Tanya Snyder to be subpoenaed, but Dan Snyder absolutely does not. 
Look, I'll say this. If we can't get Dan Snyder to talk under oath, Tanya Snyder would be a damn good consolation prize. I'll tell you that. All the drama and storylines about that, the infidelity. I mean, let's call it what it is. We, no, that's, that's, that's the point that nobody's even discussing. Where's the backbone of Tanya Snyder? Why hasn't she tried to divorce this man? I He's mean, cheating it, on you in the public eye right in front of your damn face. Well, she got access to the credit card. That that that, that certainly helps. <laughs> I mean, and my, my yeah, money, I don't money, wanna... money cures all. I yeah, know. it but helps. Boy, I mean, I, I'm not trying to dig deep into their personal life. Yes, I am. Like, come on. Have some backbone, Tanya. Seriously? You let this man cheat on you in public? I hope they subpoena her. I hope they subpoena her and she turns in to Stuart Little and just completely eats all of the cheese that the House Oversight Committee provides for her. Provolone, mozzarella, I was waiting for that jack. metaphor to get there. I was like, is Stuart Little a snitch? Did I not <laughs> watch that movie correctly? Man, crazier things have happened, man. It's, it's interesting. And I, look, I know this for certain, right? Roger Goodell paying attention to all of this. If you are the other owners around the National Football League and you are trying to come up with evidence to have a legitimate reason to vote Daniel Snyder to be forced to sell this team, this is just another tally mark on on your little book. I am genuinely curious, though, as to how this 11 hours went down because 11 hours is a long time, and I know in my heart of hearts, I don't know for sure, but I know in my heart of hearts, uh, he didn't answer every single question. There's absolutely no chance And with the legal knowledge and background that I have as being somebody that went way too hard with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, (laughs) my guess is there was a lot of rephrasing of the questions. 100%. So I'm curious to know. They better have. They better get what they need out of him. I know that. I'm curious to know how often, how many hours was it of rephrasing questions versus him actually answering the questions they had for him. And I want to know, like, was there a green screen? Was Daniel Snyder actually on the screen? Was Dan Snyder's attorney in the screen with him? What was really going on? I am eager, eager to get to the bottom of this situation. I used the metaphor the other night. I'd love to be a piece of trash in the trash can in Daniel Snyder's house, getting to listen to the audio from this deposition. Be very careful of that metaphor. You're you're lobbing up an easy one for the haters on Twitter. They, yeah, they, well, they look, we, 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 we welcome we welcome all comers here. If you got the un, if you got the kahunas to come challenge me on Twitter, please do so. N e l l underscore b t p. But yeah, I mean, something that we're going to have to pay very very close uh, attention to a, a, as the summer continues uh, to roll along. And I know this. That Dan Snyder drama helped us through a very quiet offseason in the National Football League. I'm being, I'm being sarcastic, clearly. Uh, we've got to take, we're going to take some more of your calls here. MGM National Harbor Listen Lines, wide open, 1-800-636-1067. You can get at me on Twitter and Instagram as well. N-E-L-L underscore B-T-P. Top of the hour here. We'll dive into Lewis Riddick's comments from Get Up This Morning, talking about the San Francisco 49ers QB situation. He'll give his thoughts, and I'll react to those on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. Ride with me. Listen to the fan. Hey, what's up? It's the boys from Bit Season, and today's show is sponsored by SeatGeek. And if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. We've all got the app on our phones. Use code BITSEASON for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Listen to more of what you love on Odyssey. Your favorite radio stations. The teams you live for. And the music, news, and podcasts that are essential to your day. With Odyssey, you decide how and when to listen. So it's listening your way, anytime, anywhere. Odyssey has live sports and local news happening right now. Hundreds of music stations. And playlists for your every mood. Plus millions of podcasts to catch up on. That's a lot of listening. Immerse yourself in a universe of audio with Odyssey. Listen today. William had a blocked drainage pipe causing him pain. But before he could cause a ruckus and complain, he was saved by Spartan! Spartan Plumbing came to his aid, and William's day was made. They diagnosed, and the obstruction was cleared. And as Spartan drove away, William and his family, well, they cheered. Don't you want to be saved by Spartan? 
Spartan Plumbing, 253-306-0309 or SpartanPlumbingInc.com. Home to all the jaw-dropping moments. Home to all the best plays in the league. Home to your favorite players from the cities you love. MLB.tv is the home of streaming baseball. Get your ticket to out-of-market games live or on demand across all your favorite supported devices. Home or away, you'll be able to catch all the MLB action this season and gain access to exclusive content. MLB Big Inning brings fans a special live look into the game and delivers the best highlights from games every single day. That is out of the ball Tune in for select pre- and post-game coverage or check out new MLB originals for a deeper dive into your favorite teams and ballparks. You can even check out inning milestones, in-game details, and personalize your app for your favorite team. MLB.tv has extended their content library for more originals like vendors and out-of-the-park films. You can find returning shows like MLB Carded, Baseball Zen, and so much more. There's no better place to never miss a moment of the action than with MLB.tv. Stream every game from every team all season long with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Tired of companies like Google and Facebook watching everything you do online? There's actually a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with the push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified.